What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today it is 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm just on my way home from work. So why you might be asking yourself, why? Why TJ, why are you going home at 10 o'clock in the morning? Is it because you've been gambatting, gambara, which is Japanese for do your best. No, it's not because I've been working my ass off doing overtime and being a slave to my Japanese owners. And that's not what happened. What happened really is we had a company nomikai. So nomikai means uh, drinking party. Nomi or nomu means drink and kai kind of means event. So usually uh, a company nomikai uh, usually consists of finish work at say seven, and from 8 o'clock you go to a bar or a restaurant and maybe have two hours of eating and drinking and then you go home. But um, my company, uh, there's no train station nearby and a lot of the people who work at the company don't live near nearby. One guy lives like an hour away, he drives an hour every morning to come to work. So the boss, in his infinite wisdom, decided that if we're going to have a nomikai, we're going to have to stay in a hotel go somewhere specifically and stay in a hotel so that is what we we uh, we did so we basically had um, about an hour an hour away from from work by the beach uh, we had a hotel book so about 4 30 yesterday we started packing up tidying up and putting all the bikes away and we got on the road by five so at five o'clock as soon as we left work we went to the drugstore which was confusing for me. Why are we going to the drugstore? So we went there to buy a bunch of alcohol and snacks. So I was sort of confused by this. Like, why do we need to buy our own alcohol and our own snacks if we're going to stay in a hotel? Um, the reason is, it wasn't a normal kind of hotel. It is what you call in Japanese a ryokan, which is kind of like a traditional Japanese hotel. Um, so I'll tell you more, but basically we got there just about 6 6 p.m. it was sunset and uh, we we're literally on the beach so it was a real nice looking place uh, the hotel itself was kind of well I suppose it's old so you, you know you can't really complain but it was a little bit shabby I thought there was like peeling wallpaper and the, the fire escape was rusty and stuff like that so it was it wasn't you know it wasn't luxury by any stretch of the imagination but it was just a you know a, uh, a cool place to hang out so anyway like I said we got there got there at six o'clock sunset went up into our rooms we had one room for two people and one room for three people there's only five of us in total um, so as soon as we got into the room we changed into the supplied gown like a I guess I don't think you call it a kimono, but it kind of looks like a kimono. So we got dressed into that. And then we went to the basement for a bath. So yeah, most Westerners would probably be freaked out by the fact that you have to get naked with your, your colleagues, your co-workers. But over here it's kind of a, a norm, I guess, and I've got used to it as well. Um, but basically what happens is you go downstairs to the, to the basement usually in all Japanese hotels there's a big bath or an onsen or ofuro or whatever you want to call it in the in the basement so first you go in there and there's all these little showers and little seats so you sit down to to wash yourself um, there's a regular hand you know shower that you can hold in your hand or put on the holder and then there's also a um, uh, a massive bowl I, I don't know what you I don't know even what it's called in Japanese but there's a big bowl uh, underneath the tap and you can fill the bowl with hot water and then put it over yourself put it on your head whatever you want um, but yeah basically once you've washed your body you then go into the bath so yeah you're stark bollock naked obviously you, you don't wear uh, swimming trunks or anything when you go in there so yeah, for the first time yesterday I got to see my boss's dick, which was uh, interesting. And uh, as always in Japan, any time you go to one of these onsens or a hot spa, I guess you could call it, somebody is going to say something about your dick because you're a westerner and therefore you have, uh, you know, you're hung like a donkey, according to them. 
Um, so yeah, I got lots of dick comments and uh, questions about my knob and is, is yours a regular size in England? Is that, is that normal to have such a large, a large penis? All these kind of questions. So once I told them no, I'm actually uh, less endowed than most of England. They were very surprised. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, finish the bath, go back up to the room, um, chill out for about 15 minutes or so, and then 7 p.m. was dinner time. So we all went downstairs to the second floor, to the kind of banquet area, the dining room, whatever you want to call it. And um, as soon as I saw the spread, the food that was laid out in front of me, I instantly began to feel sick. So it was, well, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised because it was a hotel next to the ocean, but the entire menu was seafood. Now I can and will eat seafood, not a problem, but I don't like it. It's kind of like torture for me. And everything on the menu was confusing to me. I didn't even know how to eat some of the stuff. Uh, there was crab, there was um, uh, octopus, there was sashimi, like raw fish, and I don't know what, like crayfish maybe? Like some kind of, like, looks like a shrimp, but it's, you know, you have to peel the skin off it, and then you have to get to the meat, and there's a special fork that you have to use, and oh, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, so basically I spent the whole evening watching my boss, and then copying him. Ah, so that's how you eat that. But basically there was nothing on the menu that I liked. And this is when I started to thank God that we went to the drugstore and bought a shitload of chips and peanuts and other stuff because, yeah, I'm not a good seafood guy. Um, but yeah, anyway, some of it was some of it was nice, uh, but the only reason I the only way I could make it through that entire dinner was because of the copious amounts of beer that were constantly constantly being brought to us by this old lady. Uh, so yeah, I basically washed everything down with beer, and so that that was okay. So dinner finished about eight o'clock, and then we all went back up to the room. So this time, my room, it was just me and one other one other fella, um, but we all that's a big fucking crane. But we all um, went back to the room, uh, sat on there's a little table in the room with a, a TV. So we basically sat there and watched TV for the rest of the night and uh, drank copious amounts of beer from the fridge um, so about well actually straight away as soon as we went back to the room one of the fellas would just passed out straight away so about eight o'clock uh, we lost one member who went to sleep and it was kind of funny to see how um, thank you kind of funny to see how their their um, alcohol reaction was because I reckon at 7:30, only half an hour into the meal, they all were pink in the face and had that kind of look on their face that's like their kind of dumb dumb look, like uh, I don't know where I am kind of look. But I think it's uh, they were just relaxed is, is the reason for that. But uh, yeah, they it's, it's kind of strange. Japanese people will have this. Um, image of you know being being weak drinkers. Uh, it's true to a certain extent, but they've got stamina. <laughs> like they'll be drunk almost straight away. Like after one beer, they'll their faces turn pink and they start acting drunk. But man, they they got this stamina. I don't know where they get it from. We were still awake at midnight probably. Um, and we bought a shitload of drinks from the drugstore and by midnight it was all gone. I think I had seven cans of uh, like whiskey and soda and the other guys probably had more than me. I think I was actually, I think I was the slacker of the, of the team. These guys, man, they, they just put it away. And the other thing I noticed is they didn't go to the toilet very often either. I was going for a piss like every 20 minutes probably, like once I've broken the seal, there was no stopping me. But those guys just, I don't know where it goes. They're like, compared to me, they're, they're tiny, 
So where does all the beer go? They must have hollow legs or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we basically went back to the room, spent the rest of the night drinking and talking and eating snacks. And uh, about 10 o'clock, one of the chaps realised that MotoGP was on. So um, we all watched, watched MotoGP on one of the guy's phones, which was kind of awkward. Uh, five people trying to watch watch the race on the phone. I was I was watching it like this, I think, something like that. So I don't even remember who won. So I'll have to watch watch the race again today. Um, yeah. So about midnight, I reckon. I was like, yeah, I'm going to bed now. So I went to bed, and this morning at about seven, one of the guys woke me up by slapping my legs, which wasn't fun. And uh, we went downstairs to have breakfast. And guess what? Guess what the breakfast menu was? Fucking fish. Again. So I had, basically this morning for breakfast, I had lettuce, some orange slices, and some rice, because I don't want to eat fish again. I'm having a month, at least a month off fish. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of fish. No more fish. In fact, tonight I'm going to fucking eat some steak just to try and balance it out wash that awful stuff out of my system um, but yeah so got back to work about 9 o'clock this morning and so now I'm just on the way home so yeah my, today's video is probably not up to my usual standards that's because I'm fucking hungover but anyway if you did enjoy the video make sure you smash the fuck out that like button subscribe if you haven't already done and please share my video and I'll see you guys next time